Hello everyone. So in this video I want to talk to you about how the NPV rule and the IRR rule are sort of related to each other. You know, every now and then you may hear someone say, look, you know, whether you use the NPV rule or the IRR decision rule to decide whether you want to accept or reject a project, uh, you could use either this or this. In other words, you'll end up making the same decision. Uh, in other words, uh, you'll hear people say that IRR and NPV are sort of consistent with each other. What does that really mean? So recall, what does the IRR rule say? The IRR rule says that, look, if you're looking at an investment, and if you find that the internal rate of return of that investment, which is the actual rate of return, if that is greater than the discount rate or your opportunity cost, which is the next best thing that you could have done, then you're essentially saying that what you're actually making is more than you could have made elsewhere, which means that you should accept the project. Now, at the same time, the NPV rule says that, look, if you find out that for a known discount rate like K equal to 10%, and here K is my symbol for discount rate, Let's suppose that you are evaluating a project, you discount the cash flows at 10%, and if you find that the NPV is greater than zero, then you should accept it. Okay, so this is what the NPV rule says, this is what the IRR rule says. When we say that NPV and IRR, they are consistent with each other, what we are really saying is this, that if you find that the net present value of a project is greater than zero, that is the same thing as saying that the internal rate of return of that project is greater than the discount rate. In other words, you would end up accepting this project using the NPV rule, and you would end up accepting this project using the IRR rule as well. So that saying that IRR is greater than K is the same thing as saying that NPV is greater than zero. So it is in that sense that we say that NPV and IRR, they're consistent with each other. Now, why is it? Why is this the case? Uh, well, take a look. Let's suppose that you're evaluating a project and you find that the NPV of that project is coming out to be greater than zero at a discount rate of 10%. What does that mean? It means that even after you have accounted for the fact that by investing in this project, you're losing 10% elsewhere, in other words, even after accounting for that opportunity cost, you're still making money on this project. In other words, net present value is greater than zero. Now, how is that possible? How is it possible that you can make money on a project even after you have accounted for this 10% that you could have earned elsewhere? That is only possible if you are making more than 10% on this project, right? It's like saying this, look, I, I want to make, if I'm making 15% doing one thing, and by, if I, by doing that thing, I'm going to be losing 10% elsewhere, well, I'm still making money, right? That's what NPV greater than zero is saying, which is kind of the same thing as saying that basically the actual rate of return that you're making is more than what you could have made elsewhere. So NPV greater than zero is uh, exactly the same thing as saying that IRR is greater than the discount rate. And so that is why the two are consistent. Now, this is the important part. While this is true in general, while NPV and IRR are consistent with each other in general, please note that this consistency only holds, only holds if the projects that you are considering have conventional cash flows. This relationship between NPV and IRR, NPV greater than zero, meaning IRR greater than discount rate, this only holds if the projects that you are considering have conventional cash flows. Now you're asking, well, what are projects with conventional cash flows? Well, we say that a project has conventional cash flows if two conditions are met. Here are the conditions. Number one, that there is only one cash outflow that is happening, which is usually at time period zero. So that's an upfront investment. So that's one. And second, after that investment has been made, all that you see subsequently are cash inflows. In other words, conventional cash flows is when you're looking at a timeline, which is something like this, where at time period zero, you have some outflow happening, and thereafter, 
at time period one you have inflow time period two you have inflow time period three you have inflow you all you get is inflows after that one outflow followed by inflows that is when you have conventional cash flows as I will explain to you later in subsequent videos, when this condition of conventional cash flows is violated, unfortunately, IRR becomes an unreliable decision rule. Sometimes you may not be able to use it like this. And so that's what's coming up. But please understand that NPV and IRR, they're only consistent with each other when you are talking about projects with conventional cash flows. In subsequent videos, I'll show you how this relationship gets violated once you consider projects with unconventional cash flows. So stay tuned for that.